reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of your holy ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and invisible. Whether dominions or thrones or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he, might, he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood of his cross. Through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. If you have been redeemed, Hazel Motes was shouting, you would care about redemption, but you don't. There's no peace for the redeemed. And I preach peace. I preach the church without Christ, the church peaceful and satisfied. Flannery O'Connor gives us a character not too unfamiliar with us today, Hazel Motes, a wounded man, a man who wants peace, who even wants the experience of a church community but does not want a church with Christ. Hazel wants wise blood, a type of blood which will offer him a way of life which is insightful and purposeful without the trappings of spirituality and emotions. Paul's letter to the Colossian community, like Hazel, also wants a certain peace of mind. At first glance, one might think that they, this church community would be the last to join Hazel's church. But their anxiety is so elevated that one would not be surprised to find them in the front pew of the church without Christ. They are anxious about many things. They are anxious about the effects of Paul's imprisonment and his impending death upon their church. They are anxious about the false prophets who confess, who confuse this pure and simple truth, which is Jesus Christ. This Colossian church is anxious about the growing hostility of non-believers who surround them. And where does this anxiety lead them? Does it lead them to the front pew of the church without Christ. At the end of O'Connor's book, Hazel tells us where the church without Christ will end up. Hazel gets literally on the top of his car and delivers his most infamous sermon. I preach there are all kinds of truth, your truth and somebody else's, but beyond all of them, there's only one truth, and that is that there is no truth. No truth beyond all truths is what I and this church preach. Where you come from is gone, and where you thought you were going to never was there. And where you are is no good, unless you can get away from it. Where is there a place for you to be? No place. No place, no truth, no Christ, and certainly no church with Christ. 
And what is Paul's response to Hazel's, Hazel's church and the anxious church of the Colossians? He gives us this now infamous Christ hymn. Here, my brothers and sisters, is a hymn which proclaims that there is no church, no truth, no peace, no place outside of the kingship of Jesus Christ. Here is a hymn which assures us even today that Christ is certainly king over the heavens and the earth, that Christ is king over all things visible and invisible. He, Christ, is the firstborn of all creation, for he is the image of the invisible God. All things were created through him and for him. And yet, my dear brothers and sisters, scanning the signs of our times, we still see anxieties rising amongst us. We still see these churches, these church without Christ, popping up all around us today in the form of what I call a self-help culture. Today's feast reminds us of many things, but I would like to point out two themes. First, this Feast of Christ the King reminds us that all our anxieties will always have a place and be in relationship with Jesus, especially Jesus on the cross. The Gospel from today shows us just how we can take our anxieties and pains from the crosses of our lives, look Jesus in the eye, and cry out, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Second, today's Feast of Christ the King reminds us of this intimate relationship between self-reflection and the kingship of Jesus Christ. For self-reflection without a belief that Christ is King will always remain incomplete, wise blood, insightful maybe, but absolutely void of the Spirit. And any notion of Christ, any theological notion of Christ, without a desire and longing for self-reflection, can never truly know the ways that Christ has become king of our lives. And so I say to you, my dear brothers and sisters, hail to the Christ who is head of our body the church. Hail to Christ, who reconciles all things through him, finding, healing, and sealing our wounds. Hail to Christ, who will not leave us with our anxieties, but bring us peace by the blood of his cross. Hail to Christ, who invites us into a process of self-reflection, a reflection on the influence of Christ's kingship upon our very lives. All hail to Christ the King. Here, oh my